I want to read a scripture that I, I believe that the Lord is leading us into. We are blessed this morning to have Elijah uh, to preach the word of God to us today. Hallelujah. This is out of Ephesians chapter 4. Pastor's been preaching out of Ephesians, had been preaching. I think it's entirely appropriate, and I heard the Lord say this. Uh, reading from verse 11. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and the teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, the measure and the the measure and the stature the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves, and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and in deceitful schemes. Rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Today, we are seeing the fruit of the Word of God coming with someone who is young and is, is stepping into the place that the Lord is preparing. Fruitfulness and equipping are the key to why we stand behind this pulpit. He starts in the process of duplicating that which he has, that which has been put into him. His calling is into the equipping of the saints, into the head. Come here for a minute. Y'all know, know him. He is just, he's a blessing. But the Lord says to you, I've made you a new wineskin, and I'm pouring my new wine into that. Now the Lord says to you, youth has no difference and no meaning for the wineskin that I am preparing. The Lord says, if this word that you have heard him receive, if you have a heart to be a new wineskin, so will I fill you up with my new wine to pour you out. We bless you. Everybody raise their hand to... to, to... Okay. Sorry about that. Father, we, we bless Elijah in your name. Father, we, we understand that there is no age difference in the Spirit of God. We bless him and acknowledge that your hand and your approval is on him. We yield to you and we come out of a place of giving him any recognition of the hand of man we recognize that your hand is upon him and therefore we humbly receive the word that he will bring forth in your name amen Here we go. Check. Cool. Okay. Well, cool thing. The word that Tom, the little word that Tom got actually flows 
very, very well with uh, what, I, what I had in mind for today, or what, uh, what God gave me. So um, today, I would love to talk about um, the spoken word, and the authority that it carries, and the damage it can do. So, this, and this refers to all spoken words. This refers to just spiritual words, um, tearing people down, building people up, just as brothers and sisters, you know, just a kind word, whatever, you know. Um, now, to start off, just because, why not? Um, uh, we'll go to uh, James uh, chapter 3. Uh, three through six. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships, which though they be, be so great and are driven uh, of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm. Whithsoever the governor listeth. Yeah. Even so, the tongue is a little member and doeth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a word of iniquity. So the tongue is among our members that it uh, defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire, on fire of hell. So... I don't know about you guys, but that scares me. <laughs> that really does. The, the tongue has such a great power and there's just so much that we don't understand when we're speaking, the authority that our tongue carries and the damage that it can do. So I was thinking about this just when Tom told me, uh, asked me to preach, more like told me. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it was funny. I got a phone call and it was just like, hey, so uh, you're, you're preaching on, uh, on Saturday. And I was like, I am? He's like, yeah, just get ready. And I said, well, can I think about it? He said, yeah, but you have to decide now. So I go, <laughs> so I go in, my, in my stubbornness from grandpa and my father. I go, well, if I have to decide now, my decision is no. <laughs> so uh, I, I called him the next day and uh, told him that I accepted because I never said, I never, uh, I never wanted, I never didn't want to do it. It's just, I wanted to, you know, bask in it for a second. I wanted to, wanted to fully feel what Tom was feeling because obviously he felt called to call me up here. So anyway, throughout the week, I was thinking of just who in the Bible, um, like what, what, what stories, what, what men or what women could I, basically draw an example from. And I was just thinking back and forth, going Old Testament, New Testament. I was like, well, the apostles, you know, Jesus, you know, obviously Jesus, but that was a little cheap. I didn't want to go there, but uh, he was the perfect man. But I thought of David. David has to be probably my favorite character in the Bible. Like just the way he, he walked with God and praised him just throughout every aspect of his life. And where I'm getting at is, uh, let's see. Uh, when David, when David was running from his life, running for his life from Saul, as Saul pursued him through, my goodness, a long period of time, he ran to the cave, he praised God, you know, but through all of this, never cursing Saul never tearing down his name because he said, why would I lift a hand against my God's anointed? The God, God's anointed, you know? So uh, go to um, 1 Samuel 24, 9 through 10. And this is the first time when uh, Saul was delivered into David's hands. And David said to Saul, wherefore uh, hearest thou men's words saying, behold, David seeketh thy hurt, thy hurt. Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how the Lord had delivered thee to today into my hand in the cave. And some, wait, is that the second one or the first one? 
No, yeah, this is the first one. Um, and some uh, bade me kill thee, but my eyes spared thee. And I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. So just because that Saul, even though he was pursuing him, even though he wanted his life unjustly, he was like, why, why are you doing this? Like, I loved you. I love you. I still love you. You are God's anointed. Like, why do you chase me? Why do you follow me through the ends of the earth? Like seeking my life, though I have done you no wrong and no harm. But he said, because you are God's anointed, I have spared your life. And again, in 1 Samuel 26, 19 through 20. Now, therefore, I pray to thee, let my Lord, the king, hear the words his, of his servant. This is the second time Saul was delivered into his hands. If the Lord has stirred thee up against me, let him accept an offering. He's saying, like, if, if you are prompted by the Lord to do this, like, let, let me repent. Let, let, me, let me give the Lord an offering so that we may, be, we may be friends again, that we may be brothers, that you may be my father. But if they be the children of men, cursed be they before the Lord. So there he said, cursed be they. He's not saying cursed be Saul. He's saying cursed be the men who prompted you. Cursed be the men that spoke evil into your head. Cursed be, you know, the enemy who prompted people. Because both God and the devil work through people. So that brings a whole nother thing to be careful of the company you keep because someone is prompting them. Well, thank you, Dan. <laughs> for they have driven out, for they have driven me out this day from abiding in the inheritance of the Lord saying, go serve other gods. So he was driven out of his land. He was driven away from his home. He was driven away from his family. And therefore, he was almost driven away from his God. But they forgot one thing. He walked with God. He carried God with him. So he was anointed. David and Saul were both anointed. God walked with them both. Now, in this... Um, Yeah, let's see. And then first Samuel twenty four, verse four. And the man of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thy hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privily. So he, he was close. He had his life in his hand. Uh, next one. And it came to pass afterwards that David's heart spoke to him because he had cut off Saul's shirt. Next. And he said unto men, the Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David stayed, so David stayed his servant with these words and suffered them not to rise against Saul, but Saul rose up of the cave and went on his way. Now, the amount of just sure willpower that David must have had, because his men wanted, wanted Saul dead, because his men, his men were, were, were forsaken too. You know, these were outlaws. These were, um, they were outlaws. I think some of them were even thieves and robbers. You know, they were with, they, they ran to David because they, they trusted him. They saw something else in him when they were exiled from the city. They're like, let us find you. So you have these men prompting you to kill your master, the Lord's anointed. Like, wh why do you let him still chase us? 
But David understood. Well, thank you. <laughs> David understood that Saul was God's anointed. Amen. And he understood the specific. <laughs> he understood that when God, God doesn't just anoint someone for no reason. There, there's a purpose behind it. Amen. So if David were to kill Saul, that would have destroyed his purpose. That would have destroyed God's will for Saul's life. And that was not David's will to do. That was not, that was not like, it wasn't his, he didn't have the authority to kill Saul is how he looked at it. He didn't have an authority to speak a word against him because he was the Lord's anointed. So, so tame your tongue. How often do we, do we speak unkindly to people and, and, and unwillingly curse or talk behind someone's back? You know, that, that's the thing. It's like, it's not even like he was speaking anything to his face. He was in a cave. He was alone. There was no one around. He so easily could have cursed Saul. He had every opportunity in, when, when he was chasing him, when he was running, you know, he, instead of running and cursing Saul, instead of doing, doing these things, he ran to the Lord. He ran to this cave to find comfort and solace within that within the Lord. So, he didn't believe in the I deserve like we believe today. Yeah, that's very good. That is very good. I deserve to not have this guy chasing me. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a whole that's a difference. <laughs> Cheapers. No, we, yeah. No, yeah, we deserve, we deserve literally nothing. Absolutely nothing. And David under, David definitely understood that. One, because he was humble. So, yeah. And then, see, I, I have three points in this. And the cool thing is all these points, I made up my points and then I thought of David after I made up the points. And I was like, oh, wow, all of these fit David. I was like, cool, <laughs> or the story of David. So the next one is uh, building each other up. And here we can go straight to Ephesians. Ephesians 4, uh, 29. And this also goes with goes with words as well. No, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying or building up, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So right there, he's saying, build each other up. Don't tear each other down. It's like, what are you doing? You're a God's people. Let no corrupt communication, no, let no bad word come out of your mouth. Now, I am, I am I'm very, very guilty of this. Um, uh, it's hard because people wrong you. People do things, you know, people upset you and you, you want to you wanna say something bad about them. You want to curse them. You want to you wanna bring them down in, in your own mind, maybe not speaking to their face, but behind their back, you want to bring them down in some way. So, so we, we, we edify ourselves or just like make ourselves, we build ourselves up by tearing someone else down. And that's not okay. The Bible says it's not okay. And David knew it wasn't okay. He didn't justify his misery by cursing someone else. He stayed firm in his belief knowing that there had to be some reason for this because, because it's all as God's anointed. It's like, why are you doing this? But he still ran. Praising God the whole way. And my second point is building each other up. So we went to Ephesians. Now we can go to Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5.11. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need. Sorry. Oh, 511. Well, I, I, oh. <laughs> cool. Uh, wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. Build each other up. 
There's many accounts of scripture. And I was thinking, I was like, uh, where in the Bible does someone just build someone else up? Like, wh- where is that? Can I, f- I was looking, I was honestly searching because there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of places where, yeah, people build other people up, but I was like, nothing was just like sticking. Nothing was like actually stuck out to me. I was like, where, where can I find this? And I already had David as the first one. And then I was like, Jonathan. So we turn to uh, 1 Samuel 18, 1. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own. They were brothers. They loved each other so deeply. In fact, it says, when Jonathan died, David said that Jonathan's love was greater than that of a woman. Like, whoa, that must have been some brotherhood. Because there was a given return. They built each other up. They pushed each other to the Lord. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Do people say that? Oh my gosh. My goodness. I, I, I had no knowledge of that. Thanks for that, Eric. <laughs> um, and then first Samuel twenty three, fifteen. And David saw, and David saw that Saul was come out uh, to seek his life. And David was in the wilderness of Ziph in the in a wood. And Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David into the wood and strengthened his hand in God. He didn't go there to say, like, hey man, how are you doing? You know, oh, my dad. Yeah. Yeah, he's coming to kill you. Yep. No, he went there specifically to strengthen his hand in God. He said, don't forsake your Lord. Don't forsake my God. Like what, how often do we do that to each other? I mean, really think about it. Not enough. Because there's always something that we need. We always need lifted up from someone. We always need just a stranger. I mean, come on. Go to someone, lift them up. It doesn't even have to be about like spiritually, just build someone up. We we were in Chipotle. Um, It was really cool. Uh, We were in Chipotle, um, us six kids, um, and we we, we sat down, we were eating our food because we were getting Emma's birthday present. And, um, or we were on our way to do that. And um, there was this little, uh, there was this mother and then this little girl and, She was just kind of jumping up and down. She was real tiny. She was probably like two or something. She was jumping up and down and just like, kind of just like being cute, like a little kid. And the mother goes, well, we're sitting down and she's like right here. And the mother goes, oh, I'm sorry. She's bothering you. And I was like, no, not at all. I was like, we were all there one day. I was like, I said, your daughter is adorable. And she goes, oh, thank you so much. She's like, you made my day, you know? And I didn't think anything of it. You know, we went about eating and whatnot. And then we're getting ready to leave. She runs up me and she hands me a pop. She bought me a pop just because of what I said. I was like, what? I was like, thank you, Lord. I mean, so into someone and you will reap a harvest. Speak words of kindness, build each other up. Like how far have we come from that? We've come a long ways because everything is so selfish. We're all so selfish. We are so self-centered and I'm right there. I'm not, I just want you guys to know, I'm not speaking from any like, I am better than you. You all know this. I, I'm selfish. I'm very selfish. So build each other up. And that is exactly what Jonathan did here. Um, next one. Yeah. And he said unto him, fear not for the hand of Saul, my father shall not find me. And thou shalt be exalted over Israel and I shall be next unto thee. And that also Saul, my father knoweth. What love Jonathan must have had for David to literally, to understand the big picture. Because if I was in Jonathan's shoes, I would, I would be looking at it just like this, how he's looking at it. 
This, is, this would be me. My father is king, I'm next. Instead, he understands that it's not, it's not through blood, it's through the anointing of God, and he saw that David was anointed. Come on. Come on. So he says, I pass this from me unto you, and I agree with what God is proclaiming over your life, that the Spirit of God is clearly resting upon you, so I sacrifice in selfishness and self, selflessness and build you up because I see what God is doing right now. I see the big picture. Saul was still anointed, but at that time, the spirit of God had left Saul. And now it rests upon David. And that was not a very common thing. Like the spirit of God actually resting on someone like, whoa, we are blessed. Let's just say that we are so blessed. So Jonathan literally sacrificed kingship in a way because the kingdom would have passed down to Jonathan but he understood the big picture. Yeah, that's right. That's good. And he said unto him, oh, next one. And they too made a covenant before the Lord and David abode in the wood and Jonathan went to his house. Man, these two had some sort of relationship. Like they, uh, so um, while, while I was going through this, I was, I was really thinking about just um, like relationships in, gen- in, in general, um, uh, this whole week has really been, um, actually this past month or so has really, God has really been like showing me just how important words are and how hurtful they can be. Specifically in my relationship with some of you have met, um, Brooke, but, um, uh, it's long distance, so it's just phone calls and, and texting. So uh, there's a lot of words exchanged. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, in that building each other up, um, uh, about a week ago, um, I was just, Brooke was going through something and um, just people speaking negatively over her. And it really, it really was affecting her. It was... It was, it was really hard. And I was left there trying to fill her up and um, speak, you know, scripture into her, pray for her. And then she, like, in a week's time, we were like, we were, she was full, you know, and she's back to normal where we're going. But after that, I was just like, wow, I'm empty. I am so empty right now. And I was just, it got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm going to fast because I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm just so empty. I'm not getting something. What am I not getting? Like, I don't know what I'm not getting. I'm reading. I'm, I'm speaking. I'm, I'm praying. We are praying. We're reading the Bible together. Like she's speaking over me. What is going on? Like what is happening? Well, uh, it was like a, it was like Tuesday night, maybe. And, um, Uh, she texts me and she goes like, what's wrong? And I was like, what do you mean? I was like, oh, I'm fine. She goes, no, there's something wrong. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm empty. I'm drained. I'm, you know, so I broke down. I cried. I started crying. Like no one was there. Just me and God just crying. I was like, what is going on? What is happening? Well, what was actually happening, which I heard, I heard Eric speak on this or not speak on this, but mention it before how women need, um, uh, women need affection and comfort. Well, men need affirmation. And she didn't know that. And I didn't know that. I didn't know what I needed. It's just a word spoken over just, just one word. Hey, I'm proud of you. Thank you for doing what you're doing. I didn't know I needed that but it was killing me not getting it. And I didn't know. So as I was crying, you know, I was actually crying right over there because I work just over there. So, um, so I was crying and I was like, God, what is going on? What is happening? You know? And I was just thinking and I was like, because so mom and dad bless 
us as children like every Friday night, and it's like the greatest thing. I, I just love it so much. It just fills me so much. And I was like, I need her to bless me too. Amen. I, need, I, need, I need to know, as a guy, I need built up and like, hey, you're doing a good job because I'm trying. I'm working over here. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. You know, you're very far away. So I didn't know I needed that. And it's as simple as a word, but it was killing me not having it. It was absolutely destroying me. It's, I mean, just wrapping your mind around that. And I'm, I'm full now. I'm, I'm fantastic. But you don't understand how powerful a word is until it's spoken over you or you don't have it. So God was very gracious um, in helping us figure that out um, because, yeah, we didn't know. So, so that was amazing. And that, that just kind of ties into the building each other up. Um, not necessarily just like spiritually, because we already do that. I thought it was a spiritual lacking that I didn't have, but it was, it was just the word. It was just, it was just confirmation that she cared that I was working, that I was, that I was, that I was doing my best, you know? So there's that. I just thought that was really cool how it really, um, I decided pretty much when you called, I was like, well, I'm going to speak on the word, the spoken word, you know, because that's just where God had us, right? Had, had me um, at the time. Time. <laughs> okay, here's a fun one. Your tongue is a sword. Uh, can you pull up uh, Proverbs twelve eighteen? There is that that speaketh, like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. There's one example, that's Solomon. And can you um, bring up Psalm 64, verse 3, please? Yes. Who with their tongue, like a sword? Yeah, who was that? Who wet their tongue? Like, who with their tongue, like a sword, and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words? Your tongue is a weapon, your tongue is a sword. It said, the scripture is a sword to cut between bone and marrow to separate soul from flesh. And it's not talking about the written word, it's talking about the spoken word. Because in the beginning, God spoke. He didn't write it down. Your word carries authority. That's why I started a long time ago actually reading my Bible out loud. I never read it in my mind. I speak it. And that has helped me dramatically. I mean, it's just, it's just one little thing. It's speaking. But we as Christians do not understand how powerful your tongue is, how powerful the spoken word is. And even the spoken scripture, I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Everything applies, everything is inter intertwined with us now today because everything repeats. My notes are all scrambled. <laughs> yeah. So the, the spoken word is the thing that God uses to bring spiritual things into the physical realm. Ooh. It's the only creative force in the physical realm. Need a mic. I lost your mic. Yeah. Um, so what Eric is saying is that the spoken word is the only thing that can bring what is in the spiritual into the physical. That's how God designed it. And that's why your words are so powerful. It's creative, whereas everything else 
is formative. The oh. spoken word is creative. Yeah, he's saying the spoken word is creative, creative while everything else is formative? Yeah, that's very good. Mm. That is very good. The spoken word, it's be careful. <laughs> be very careful. All right. Uh, let's go to Acts ten thirty eight. So we're on your tongue as a sword. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about go doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him because he was anointed. Now, because God dwells in us, the Holy Spirit dwells in us, are we not God's anointed? And how many of us curse God's anointed? All of us. Your tongue is a sword and David held his. He had his, he had his strap to his side under lock and key when it came to God's anointed. He said, no, I will not curse you. Even Saul's descendants. I don't know where that was. Uh, remember one of Saul's descendants when um, Aphibosheth, yes. Yeah, they were throwing stones at him and cursing him, but because he was one of Saul's descendants, it wasn't even Saul. He just said, forgive him, for he doesn't know. David even said, uh, provided for him. I think that's... Um, David provided for him. Did, did he? Was that, that's not the same one that was throwing no, stones at him. Is the guy you're oh, okay. Yeah. You you were going okay. Nope. Nope. I wasn't going that way. That was, that was my bad. I should have had that uh, written down somewhere. But yeah, as they were throwing stones at him, he said, forgive them. Like, hey, I'm, you know, because he was accusing them from what he heard from other people. From what other people were speaking into him, saying that you have wronged my father, you have killed my father. Or, yeah, you, you, have, you have stolen his anointing, basically. And he, it, and he was cursing him for that. So the question is, because David held his tongue against God's anointed, why don't we? Why don't we? I have I thought I had a oh boy. Why do you think David was able to do that? Hmm. Well, for one, he was in love with the Torah. He already knew what to do. Love God and love your fellow man. That's what the Torah is about. He walked with God so closely. Like we, we were talking, me and me, me, dad and uh, someone else. Uh, anyway, we were having a Bible time and um, we, were, we somehow got on the subject of, of David. And yeah, he was in love with the Torah. He was absolutely in awe of God's law. Absolutely. And because of that, because he, he, the thing is, he knew exactly what to do. He was never, that's the thing with the Torah. You, you know exactly what to do. He was never asked, well, should I do this? Should I do that? Is this a sin? Should I curse him? No, because he knew not. He knew better. Because the Torah already tells us. Yes. Yeah. 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 And they cast stones at David and at all the servants of the king and all the people uh, and all have 
and all the mighty men were on the right hand and on his left. And thus said Shimei, uh, when he cursed, come out, come out, thou bloody man, and thou man of Bela. The Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul in those stead. Thou hast reigned, and the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son. And behold, uh, thou art taken in thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. And the next one. Yeah, when, then Abishai. Yeah, this is a good one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then said Abishai, the son of Zeruah, uh, uh, unto the king, why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take his head off. You know, he had people speaking to him like, let me just go and kill this guy. You know, can I just go and kill this guy, please? And he's like, no, you know, it's, yeah, it's, you know, one of, you know, Saul's descendants anointed by God. And plus, he, he's telling a lie anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. And how many of us, when someone tells a lie or accuses of, us of something, take it to heart? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, it's a lie. You know it's a lie. That's not true. So what does it matter? Right. Move on. And when it comes to compliments and good things people speak over us, oh, no. You brush it off. Why is that? Why do we do that? We constantly do that. When someone compliments you, like, it's, it's a constant thing. Just take it. Let's accept it. It's a gift. It's a gift. Take it. It should be opposite, guys. It should be such the opposite. But because someone who doesn't know us claims something that isn't true, Somehow that all of a sudden matters to us. That's good. And maybe this person does know us. And maybe this person just was wrong. Do you forgive that person? Because so- David forgave Saul a lot of times. I mean, how many times did Saul chase David? And then he repents right after. Um, uh, let's see. Let's go back to um, uh, 1 Samuel 26, but go 21. Yeah. Then Saul said, I have sinned. Return my son David, for I will no more do thee harm, because my soul was precious in thine eyes. This day, behold, I have played the fool and have earned uh, erred exceedingly. So even in humility, he's like, and, and that's the thing too. Okay, that's, that, I'll, I'll talk on this right now, but then, yes. Um, even when Saul was like, yeah, I did wrong. That was wrong. You know, shoop, right back to it. Because of the people he was around. Because of the people speaking into him and even like, it said, um, an evil spirit rested upon Saul. And it doesn't necessarily, I don't think it necessarily covers how long it was on there. If it was on there the whole duration of him chasing David, or was it people influencing him? You know? But anyway. Uh, and, and this is the thing, too. With taming the tongue, um, David, when he spoke to Saul, when he confronted Saul, when he said, look, here is my gar- your garment in my hands that I cut off of you in the cave while I could have killed you. He goes about it in the most humble way. He doesn't come to him and say, look, I totally could have killed you. Just leave me alone. No, he goes, my Lord. Uh, can you go back? Oh, where are we at? Um, uh, I think it's... Um, uh, 24, nine, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and then go to 10. This one here. Yes. Yes. This one, David arose afterwards and went out to the cave and cried 
after Saul saying, my Lord, the King. And when Saul looked behind him, he stooped, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself, bowed himself before the man who was coming to kill him. Who's literally coming to kill him. And he still approached it with a humble heart saying, my Lord, the King, I spared your life. Please spare mine. The Lord delivered you into my hands. So how many times in a situation where we are right, do we handle it very poorly? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're right. So you want to just blow up. You want to be like, yeah, you look at me. Yep. Right here. God's anointed right here, right here. You know, so that's what I'm saying. You have to be so careful and approach, approach it humbly. When you come to correction, approach it humbly. (laughs) When you go to correct someone, approach it humbly. Because David has to be one of the most humble men in the Bible. The way I see it, because the way, the way a relationship with Christ works, you can't exalt yourself. Amen. You are absolutely nothing, and David knew that. Absolutely nothing without God, without his father, without his comforter, without his shield. He was absolutely nothing, nothing. and throughout all the Psalms, it shows. He was a selfless man when it came to what people thought about him, his relationship with Christ. Even the words of his wives meant nothing to him. As he dances feverishly, you know, and he's, he's naked, okay? He's dancing naked before the Lord. And his wife is absolutely ashamed by him. And he's like, oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. It's like, I will be, what, what does he say? I will be undignified. Yeah. What, what, what is that verse? Yeah, I will be more undignified than this. Basically saying, you know what? This is my relationship with my Lord. I don't care what anyone else thinks. And how many of us as Christians actually care what other people think about our relationship with Christ and where we're at right now? Yeah. <clears throat> A lot of us care a lot. A lot of us want to be wanted. We want to fit in. But the sad truth is that if you're walking in truth, as David walked, you will more than likely be alone in a cave with God. with a group of what seem to be misfits as running, running for your life from those who would persecute you from walking in righteousness. And what David did not do was back down from his righteousness and lower himself to their standards because then he would be just like them. He would still be God's anointed, but just like them. Come out from among them. What did we always tell you guys when you were little and you played with other kids? What did we tell you? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I I remember this. We, yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out a better way to frame it. You, you carry the name Yoder. Well, that oh. we're all weird. Oh, we're all weird. Yeah, we're all different. That was that was another one. He said, "Hey, you carry you carry my name." He's like, "So you know, you are responsible." Um, that too, but yeah, we're we're all different. He's like, <laughs> it's like we we realize that he's like people do things differently. People people will do things that you won't agree with. People are different. We 
we're a lot different than everyone. And growing up, that I don't know what was like. We had probably no friends. No, I mean Isaac. And, <laughs> Isaac and me had friends. <laughs> Bella, the, the deal was Bella and Emma didn't necessarily have friends growing up. They had they had each other. <laughs> but now, now, now there is a lot. I mean, there's ridiculous the amount of friends they have. The boys handled it better than the girls. No, they had the Daniel. <laughs> Uh, yes. So, uh, <laughs> my point is, <laughs> my goodness, where was I even going with that? <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> so, um, oh, but but what I really think that God was doing in in Bella and Emma's lives, and even in ours depriving us of friends at that young age because we are different helped mom and dad lay a foundation Come on. uninterrupted by anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking bad. That where, where you were going was coming out from among them. I mean, that, yeah. Just no, that for real. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Good. So once that foundation was laid in, our, in my life, in Isaac's, and especially in Bella and Emma's, they have like all the friends, okay? We, we go to CrossFit and stuff, and it's like, we're at, each night we're like bringing home a stray. My mom calls them strays when it's like, it's uh, Katie Carlisle from CrossFit, Hannah Reitler. Yeah, but, Riley. Yeah. R- yeah, Riley, Adam, you know, just a bunch of different, different friends. And it's just, it's, it's amazing how, in what seems like a season of drought in that relationship area, God was just preparing you and building you up and getting your foundation firm so that you would not be shaken by the ample amount of friends that are coming your way. The ample amount of fruitfulness that he has for you. So what may seem like a season of drought, maybe God's preparing you for something. Hmm. You were, you were called to be like them. You were called to lead and not follow. Mm. Right? Yeah. Come Amen. But to follow, to lead, you have to follow. That's right. That's right. And what is the best way to learn how to follow? Humble. Humble. Example. Humble. Humble. I'm saying just like physical. By good example. Like By good example. Listening, serving your parents. That's right. Listen up, kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. That's true. For real. Ephesians 6 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. This is right that it may be long, that your life may be long with you. Yes. Well with you. Well. Yeah, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and their mother. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise. That it may be well with you, that you may have a long life. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah. Yeah. So, yes. Honor your father and your mother. Trust in their decisions because like Jonathan trusting God that he had it figured out, that he had a big picture, he was able to, he was able to see the big picture. He was able to let go, exactly. In complete and utter selflessness, mm-hmm. let go of his kingship. Because Saul wasn't going to live forever. And Jonathan, even though he was a mighty man, a mighty man, he humbled himself because he saw someone mightier. Someone who God specifically anointed for the kingship of his nation. We didn't have an identity crisis. Yes, yes, oh my gosh. We could go back to parents and, yeah, the identity. Oh my goodness. That's why I asked you that earlier. How was David and Jonathan able to do that? Because they were secure in the Lord for themselves. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. That's right. 
Amen. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, anyway. That's true with all relationships. You're not going to have a solid relationship unless each one individually is solid with the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's real so too. And you're not going to have a fruitful relationship if each member does not contribute yes. spiritually and physically just building each other up Amen. Yes, that's right. because it says we are a body of Christ. Right. So how can we have an arm without a leg or missing two legs and a toe? How can the head curse the leg? No, that's right. Wow. That's right. Okay. Tom just said, how can a head curse the leg? Yeah. Amen. But why does the kidney want to be the hand? <laughs> exactly. We 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 are we're appointed specific yes. roles yes. in this world. And if you let pride get in the way and you are selfish, maybe you're called to follow and you want to lead. Then you're going to have a, yeah, an arm leading the eyes, you know, like a blind person. And that's, that's not right. That's not how God intended it to be. You were called for a specific purpose. Humble yourself before God and learn that purpose. So that you can walk the path that he has instructed you to walk from the beginning. Because we are all anointed. We are all called individually. It's like a puzzle piece. But there's a lot of us and there's a lot of pieces. And a lot of pieces get lost. Or a lot of pieces are trying to fit inside, trying to go in upside down. Or just fit in the wrong, in the wrong place. That one word of encouragement could turn that puzzle piece yeah. just the right way in order for him, for him to fit where he's supposed Come to go. On. Yeah. Come on. yeah. It just takes one, one good word. And it's absolutely amazing how much more powerful a good word is than a bad. Because a bad word is just immediate, immediate destruction. It's just an immediate, just chop the tree down, timber, it, it's done. We're done here. But a good word is not an action, it's a seed. And you have to be careful that we don't quote those proverbs of old that are incorrect. Sticks and stones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is not correct. Yes. Yeah. Yes, words are very hurtful. It, and like I was saying, words that you need that you're not getting are also hurtful. Like wrap your head around that. I was like, what? <clears throat> but we as men and women need different things physically and spiritually. We need different words. So learn those words as husbands, as wives, as friends, as family members. It will help you, I promise you. But yes, um, the, a good word planted is a seed. And that seed may take time. It will take time. But it is a seed planted and it will be a lot stronger. It will be, it will be fruitful. Because it's, that's interesting. It's like a seed planted it bears fruit you know, a good word, but a bad word also bears fruit, just in a different way. That's right. So you have to be so careful, so careful. Oh, um, but yeah, I just wanted to, in, in the building each other up whole thing, um, I just wanted to speak on just how, just real quick, um, how absolutely important and to me. So ever since we started the, just the whole 
Sabbath thing and the Shabbat thing. Every Friday night, mom and dad go around and just bless us kids. And that has had the most impactful and just tremendously, like in my life. It has been absolutely amazing. Like, I mean, we were talking the other day. It's like, we're, we're excited for like Friday night. We're like, we get to get blessed, <laughs> you know? And then mom and dad both pray over us. And it's, it's like something that you didn't know that you needed, but now you do, so you can't live without it. You need, like, as, as a son just growing up, I need my father's approval. And I need to know that I am loved and wanted, you know? So mom and dad will say, uh, we love you. We bless you. We're so glad that you're mine, that you're ours. And just like speak words of like that. over And that means so much to me, so much to me, just as a son. Because God, God's speaking the same thing into us. So why would our earthly fathers and mothers not do that for us? Because whether we like it or not, we have flesh and we have feelings. We can't just be fed spiritually. We also have to be fed by words, physically, to build each other up. And those words are also spiritual, you know. But, I mean, I don't know, where does affirmation fit into there? Is that, is that? Yeah. It's spiritual. Yeah. It's the word building. Yeah. Yeah. That's, well, when the, the dove came down and Jesus, God affirmed Jesus, and he says, you are my mm. son, in whom, in whom I am well pleased. I'm, yeah. I'm well pleased. And it was, I'm sorry, go ahead, please. I was just going to say, and it, and it was audible and spoken. Mm. Yeah. Because it wasn't just, oh, and I felt in my heart that God's heard. I mean, everyone yeah. heard it, right? Yeah. So there went to the spoken word that Eric was talking about. Mm. It originates in the Trinity because the Father is constantly is constantly affirming the Son. The Son is being affirmed by the Spirit. All three are are in a place where they are in awe of each other and they tell each other that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what we have and what you're experiencing in your family is that which is from the beginning in the Godhead. That affirmation started there originally. Mm. What, what Tom is saying for people on Zoom is that affirmation started with the Trinity as um, God the Father, um, uh, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are speaking into each other, um, affirming each other. And he was saying that is passed down into us as our parents bless us, as we bless our parents, as we serve our parents as our parents provide for us, as they love us, as we all love each other as a congregation, as a people, as a body. So God already knew what to do. He knew what we were doing. He gave us everything we need. Said, be humble and speak kindly. I mean, come on. So David lays it out pretty heavy there. (laughs) He sets an amazing example to follow as I'm looking at it, an impossible one. But nothing is impossible through Christ who strengthened me. (laughs) Difficult, very difficult. Yeah, so. I just, I have a portion from the Lord that for for those of you, the Spirit of the Lord says that for those of you who have given you, you just hold it. Yeah, don't kiss me. For those of you who have had uh, an earthly father and a mother who may have fell short in this area, the Spirit of the Lord wants you to know that you can still receive this now, but the way to it is to give and you shall receive. So in order to go into this, there's a step that must be taken if you're lacking this in your life that you must start giving this to those people around you and it will return back to you. It'll return back to you pressed down and overflowing. If you're lacking this in your life, so into other people and, and the Lord will return it to you. If you didn't get this as a child. Well, the Lord will not return to you. Yes. 
Yeah, and dad just said, the word of the Lord will not return void. That's very good. So if anyone has anything to add or take away, I, uh, I have said what I came to say. <laughs> and uh, I've just been so blessed by what you said this morning. Yeah. This is really well, helpful. Is. I, hope, I hope my children are listening to this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You spoke boldly and you were you were unapologetic. You were not fearful to speak on difficult truths that need to be said. And I thought you heard the word of the Lord and you brought as well. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Charlie, do you have anything to say? I'm just being blessed. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that little note I gave this guy a couple of weeks ago might have made a difference. It did. Know. It did. It really did. Thank you, Charles. See, that was a blessing. Yes. Well, so again, yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I really appreciate everything everyone has done here for me and my family for just continually blessing us. And it's it's just been just been amazing. And a lot of you got to watch all of us grow. Um, and it's just been, been so much fun. And I, th this was a long time coming, you know, so uh, I'm glad that uh, finally made it happen. So thank you all for listening and hearing. Why don't you bless us? Yeah, Absolutely. Lord, I thank you for the congregation at Carmel Christian Center, Lord. Father, I pray that you'll continue to bless them. Father, walk, when, walk with each of them individually. Lord, I thank you for the specific callings that you have for each and every one of them, Lord. I pray that you will continue to give them the ability to bear fruit, to sow seeds, and to reap a harvest, Lord. Father, that you will continue to reveal to them your scripture and everything that you have for them in their individual lives. Lord, hit them on a personal level that they have never been felt before. Father, I pray that you will reveal yourself to each and every one of us here in just an amazing and splendid fashion. Father, that you will be more real than anything in our lives, Father, and in our mouths, Father, that you will continue to let us Keep our sword in our sleeves and at our side, Lord. Let's not strike anyone that does not need to be struck. Let us tame our tongues. Father, I, I pray that you will continue to bless each and every one of us here. Father, bless their coming in and their going out as they rise up, as they go to sleep, and as they go throughout the day. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Yeshua, I pray. Amen. Amen.